the biggest question we get is how does snowmaking work? Um, from the outside looking in, it seems pretty simple. You just spray some mist into the air and it turns into snow. And so people try that. They'll spray a mist at home with a, a special nozzle or a pressure washer. And all they get is ice on the ground. So they email me and say, what's going on? I'm, I'm spraying mist into the air. Why am I not getting snow? Well, here is the answer. Let's pretend this ball is a droplet of water. Uh, this little guy needs one of two things in order to freeze and turn into snow. Um, a naturally formed particle of water like this one from uh, a pressure washer or just from pressure in itself will cool down and cool down and cool down forever and become super cooled, which means it's, it's below freezing but it's not frozen. And you ask, how can that be? Well, take freezing rain for example. The second that supercooled water hits something that freezes, which is the first way a droplet can freeze, by hitting something solid to freeze onto. But there is another way for it to freeze, and that is what we call disrupting. Um, we break apart the water particles into these unnatural particles, and they can also freeze that way without having something to freeze onto. And the perfect tool for doing this is compressed air. Compressed air is, is perfect for this because it also expands as it cools. Um, if you think of a propane tank or those canned air uh, bottles, as you use those, the outside gets cold because the air is expanding and it's cooling. So as that compressed air breaks apart the water into those particles that can freeze, it also cools those droplets so that they can freeze much quicker and turn into snow faster. A snowmaker uses both of these methods uh, to make snow. A snowmaker will have two different types of nozzles, a nucleation nozzle and then a misting nozzle. Uh, nucleation nozzles combine the compressed air with the water to create that second type of freezing I described. Then the ice crystals that are formed by that nozzle are then sprayed in the same direction as the misting nozzles. The misting nozzles make a mist that then freezes onto the ice from the first type of nozzle and it makes more snow. It is really, really inexpensive to make the mist, but it's expensive to use compressed air. So a snowmaker uses as little compressed air as possible to make snow. So this system with two types of nozzles is how you do that. Use a little bit of compressed air to make that first ice and then spray mist on top of that to freeze onto that ice. The first thing you'll need is an air compressor. Um, you want to make sure it pumps at least 5 CFM of air at 90 PSI or 6 CFM at 40 PSI. And CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. Um, any less than that and you're going to get mixed results making snow. You can use anything from an inexpensive model that runs $100 to a fancy $500 machine. Uh, but two, there are two things you want to check on. First, oil lubed and second is continuous duty. An oil lubed continuous duty compressor will handle snow making the best, whereas an oilless half duty compressor is going to wear out much quicker than the one I just mentioned. However, a $100 oil lubed compressor will likely be tough enough to handle the average snow making load that someone will put on it. Unless you're making snow every night for hours and hours and hours, a basic air compressor will probably do the job for you. Second, you need a pressure washer. Uh, the PSI really doesn't matter here. Um, any PSI of a pressure washer will work. The GPM rating, gallons per minute, is what you want to look for because that will be the biggest factor in how much snow you can make. Um, more GPM, more gallons per minute that are going through the snowmaker equals more snow. It's a pretty simple equation. Most electric models um, will run about 1.3 to 1.7 GPM. And they're going to cost you about $70 to $150. Uh, gas models, just basic gas models, will usually run about 2.0 to 2.6 GPM. They'll cost anywhere from $200 to around $400 or $500. And then a, a larger industrial model will run about 3.0 to 4.5 GPM. And they're going to cost you around $700 to upwards of $2,000. Any of these will work great. Just remember, more GPM equals more snow.
Pressure washers and air compressors are expensive, so we always recommend you borrow equipment if you don't own it already. Uh, ask your neighbors if they have one. I think you'll be really surprised at how many do. When I first started making snow, I was spending $350 on these compressors. When it turned out, my neighbors had much bigger, better models that were just sitting in their garages. They were willing to lend to me, but I just didn't ask. So, can't hurt to ask and it could save you quite a bit of money. If you feel uncomfortable borrowing or you can't find someone to borrow from but don't want to buy, try Home Depot's rental center. Um, they have really impressive machines in there. Um, they're commercial grade, um, both air compressors and pressure washers, and you can rent them for about $20 to $30 a day. If you absolutely must buy, shop around, um, and I'd recommend the following sites. HarborFreight.com, uh, AirCompressorsDirect.com, PressureWashersDirect.com, and eBay. eBay has a lot of awesome deals on both, especially electric pressure washers. You can get them for sometimes 40 or 50 bucks on eBay. A lot of people ask, um, why don't we sell air compressors? Why don't we sell pressure washers? Well, as great as it would be for us, uh, if you bought a compressor from us, you know, we could slap our logo on it and resell it to you for $150 more than we paid. That's not any good for you. Um, you can't save as much money buying from us as you could buying from a, an established retailer. Um, so it would be nice for us to make more money, but in the long run, it's cheaper for you to buy it from someone else. Um, there's no way we could stock them and, and buy them at a, a rate that would save you money um, even compared to Lowe's or Home Depot. So that's about it. I'm sure that answered every question you have ever had about snowmaking. Uh, but if for some reason it didn't, don't hesitate to, to contact us through our website and uh, let us know if you have any questions at all. We're always happy to answer questions. So thanks and uh, happy snowmaking.